So in the last video, we had just, I had just finished my line art. And remember that this is at high resolution. This is by 10 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Another way to say that is it's 3,500 pixels by 3,500 pixels. So if we view it at screen resolution, go to view and say pixel to pixel, you can see that it's really quite clean. But of course, if we zoom in more than that, we're going to start to see the pixels because it's, it's not a vector, it's, it's a raster image. So the ultimate goal is to be able to change your line art, your pixel line art into a vector. And I'm always searching for freeware ways to do this. And as of last semester, I had a way <laughs> which I put into the assignment. It's with all the new AI um, software. It's called Vectorizer AI. And what you can do is just drag a JPEG or a PNG of your line art into it. And you don't get that many options, right? But then you let it run through the process. So I'll let it do that. And this is what's called image tracing or vectorizing, taking pixels and turning them into a vector. And on your final exam, I'm going to show you some images and I'm going to ask you if they're good candidates to vectorize or not. So here we have the side by side results. If we zoom in, you can see that here they are pixel based. That's what I uploaded. And this is the vector that it's coming up with. Pretty clean, pretty nice. So the trick is, are we able to download it? Now, what makes something good to vectorize? Because you can put any PNG into this program and it will try to give you something, it does, or any JPEG. doesn't mean it's always going to be a, a good result. It's things that have clean, contained shapes and edges, right? If I put in a, a photograph of a sunset with all the gradient colors, the vector is not going to look good at all. It's going to be really chunky and terrible. But if I put in clean black line art done from a digital program, it's going to look better than the raster version. So this is vectorizing or image tracing. And if you hit download, you'll get this screen. And before this worked, but now when I hit download, it says that you need to log in with a subscription. So that's frustrating. So I'll try signing in. I'm just using my Gmail, but it doesn't look like there's a free way to do it, but you can just pay by use. And it's pretty cheap. So you can buy 50 credits, you know, for $9.99 and then kind of like how a lot of AI models are working now, even though this isn't AI, this is just standard. So it used to be free. They got me hooked when it was free. Now it's not free. So how can we do it, even though it's not freeware, how can we turn it into a vector instead of just being a high resolution? We need Adobe Illustrator for that, and we have it on our computers, right? So what we do is instead of dragging it into that program, Vectorizer AI, or this old one, which I used to like, which is the same sort of thing, Vector Magic. This is why it's not any new AI technology. This has been around for decades, VectorMagic.com which is a fantastic program. It's a lot cheaper than Illustrator, but all it does is image trace. You can do the same thing. It will do the same thing. You just can't download it as a vector, right? You can preview it. You can see it, but you can't download it as a vector. So how can you do it? Well, you can open this raster file up with Adobe Illustrator, any version, but we'll use the latest version. And it will do its own version of this, but it's just a little bit more technical. So when you open it up, you first click on it and then size it onto the artboard. So hold down shift so that it locks its proportions because unlike photo P illustrator, you have to hold down shift when you change its size so it doesn't distort. 
And then I purposely made it so the white of the image is overhanging what's called the artboard because we don't want white in our image. We just want black lines, right? Then once it's selected, you go to properties and then you click on image trace. And then once you click on image trace, you go to black and white logo. And this is the only way I recommend using image trace. So when you're vectorizing, I always recommend it's just black on white shapes, cleanly defined. That's going to give you the best vector. Then it's going to preview it and you're going to see something that is a vector, right? But we haven't actually vectorized it yet. It's just previewing your settings. It isn't a vector until you hit expand. Now, because this is Illustrator and not just a website, um, it gives you more options. So I want you to make you aware of that because if we hit expand right now, it would give us black shapes and white shapes. So I'm going to click on the extra features here. This is called the image trace panel, which is right next to our presets. And I'm going to click on the advanced options in the drop down menu. And then the first thing I'm going to do is click on under options, ignore color, and it will erase the background color. So all we have are black vector outlines. And this is what I'm doing with the morning class, right? So now I take those black vector outlines and I can modify them. They look pretty darn good because this was inked pretty carefully in Photopea. But if I thought they were a little too thick, I could take my threshold down in these settings and I can let it thin it out a little bit. It's just very subtle but it's thinning it down. Or if I want it to be a little bit thicker, I can push that up and it will get a little thicker. So I think I want mine maybe around right here. And then I can choose if I want fewer paths or more paths. And that's going to be going to help to, to simplify things, smooth things out. And then I can choose whether I want fewer corners, right? Like that or more corners. But then sometimes, it can just get it a little weird and you can get these little stair steps. So often the defaults should be observed, but you want to look at them closely. So I'm going to undo this, go back before I image traced in my history. And then I'm going to image trace again, go to black and white logo. And then the only setting I really need because I did such a, a careful job is to ignore that background color. And then just zoom in and see if it looks pretty good. And this looks pretty much exactly like what I designed. Except now it's a vector, no pixels, perfectly clean. So if I like that, and I do without the white background, then I hit expand in the corner here. And now if I use the small selection tool, I'll see all the individual anchor points. And what's great about that is if there is anything I want to correct, I can use the Illustrator tools to do that, just like we did in Vector.com. So for instance, my favorite tool in Illustrator, which is different than Vector.com, is the Pencil tool. Because once you can see the anchor points, then you can use them as magic scissors and draw on the path and end on the path and reshape your vector. Right, like that. Is there anything else? I think that's pretty good because remember this does not need to be perfect if I want to smooth it out I can use the pencil tool here maybe change that arc use the pencil tool here maybe change that arc but I think that's good now once you're ready to save it and we're at time so this is perfect for the class you're gonna say file save a copy and from there, just like we did out of vector.com, you're going to save it as an SVG, not compressed, just a regular SVG. And I'll save that right to my, well, I'll save it to the desktop so I can move it into the right assignment. Right, then I can close it and I never need to even save this as an Illustrator file. I'm just using access to Illustrator in the lab to vectorize it into an SVG that I can then use in freeware. All right.
So I don't need to save it as an Illustrator file. I just need that SVG. And then I'm going to put that into my folder. I can't put this into Canvas yet because it's a vector file, this SVG. But I will show you how we can put that into to Canvas at the beginning of next class. And we're going to use that as our vector line art in order to color behind. All right, nice work, guys. Let's work to try to get line art finished by next class so we can add color. And if you decide on a wholly different subject, you know how to sketch it up and how to...